Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes, and boy, is this weird. Elon Musk is a South African-born American citizen, US citizen, and he wants to interview American-born US citizen, former and likely to be next president of the United States, Donald Trump. And he wants to do it in America and present it on an American-owned platform, X. You'd think that the Americans would understand that this was all very fine and pleasant, and indeed it is. But there is one organisation that doesn't like it. It doesn't like the idea of, quote, electoral interference, and it wants to control the narrative and make sure that nothing is untoward. What's odd about this is that the organisation calling for this is the EU that has absolutely nothing to do with the American election. What business is it of the EU what goes on in America between American citizens in an American presidential election? But the EU, with this sense of hubris, its self-importance, has decided to wade in and tell the Americans what they can do so long as it doesn't breach EU law. Now, I'm pretty certain that the Americans will shove a single figure finger up at the EU and tell them to keep their big noses out of American domestic policy. This has got nothing to do with you, they will say. Please kindly turn around and F-R-O. Now, who is this guy? His name is, let me see, Thierry Breton, right? Uh, and he's sort of stepping directly into American domestic politics and doing so in a way where he's telling others not to do this. It's a weird, hypocritical attitude. So the European Union now, today, uh, well, actually it was last night, Monday night, um, demanded that Elon Musk abide by Brussels speech restrictions that apply only to EU com uh, countries. You must not do or say things that breach EU law. What? Are you kidding me, right? Um, so in a letter addressed to the tech billionaire, Elon Musk, um, which is obviously ahead of this, this uh, interview he's going to have with Trump. This guy, Thierry Breton, who is the European Commission's chief censorship czar. I mean, it's just out there, isn't it? The Ministry of Truth. This guy represents the Ministry of Truth, right? He threatened to deploy all powers available to him under the Digital Services Act against X if the US presidential candidate breaches EU restrictions on speech. Now, I'm going to tell you now that the EU, as far as the Americans are concerned, can go fuck themselves in the immortal words of Elon Musk. Because in America, they've got the First Amendment, the right to free speech. Now, we know the EU hates free speech because free speech means people can say exactly what they think, especially about the EU. And boy, they don't like that. It is absolutely mad. This is beyond anything I have ever heard before. This is just mind-blowing, isn't it? He says in this letter, I am writing to you in the context of recent events in the United Kingdom, which again, nothing to do with the EU, we're not in the EU, and in relation to the planned broadcast on your platform X of a live conversation between a US presidential candidate and yourself, which will also be accessible to users in the EU, this is what this guy's saying, because it's accessible to the people in the EU, it says that uh, Brussels will monitor the dissemination of content that may incite violence, hate and racism in conjunction with major political or societal events around the world, including debates and interviews in the context of elections. This has got nothing to do with the EU. They want to control American censorship and free speech. They want to override America's First Amendment. 
are they serious? The Americans will not regard this, right? Uh, the EU said ship chief demanded, therefore, right, that X implement mitigation measures against the amplification of harmful content that may generate, generate detrimental effects on civic discourse and public security in Europe. What they're saying is we are deeply, deeply scared of the Americans' ability to speak truth. We are deeply scared that European citizens will listen to the truth and apply that truth to us and see us in a very, very bad light. That's what this is. This is the EU not looking to protect European citizens at all. This is the EU trying to deflect American uh, to EU citizens from watching this and realising the truth about how badly they have had their rights to freedom of expression curtailed and how the EU controls the narrative, controls what they put out as the perceived truth. There is a bullshit argument about, oh, things are going wrong. Oh, look at these riots. Oh, look at that. Look at the people of Britain standing up and saying no to unguarded, unlimited, unchecked immigration. We don't want that in the rest of Europe, do we? Do we? No. And this course comes on the effect, uh, oh, sorry, on the tail end of Elon Musk saying that he predicts there will be civil war in Britain because of this this immigration problem that's not being addressed by a government that is refusing to listen and refusing to act in the best interests of the people of this country and is in fact just a WEF puppet regime that is put in there to make things worse for people and then to outlaw people from talking about it. To raise this subject will become a crime. To question the narrative will become a crime. And that is what the EU are pushing for as well. And that's why they're scared of X. That's why they're scared of Musk. That's why they're deeply, deeply scared of Trump. But most of all, they're scared of the US's First Amendment. And I think that somehow Britain needs to have a Bill of Rights, an absolute written, lawful, unchanging, unyielding Bill of Rights. And number one must be that First Amendment, the right to say anything. And that includes saying things that may be offensive, that may be hurtful. And certainly they must be backed up. And I feel now we're getting to the point where we're going to have to start looking at a Second Amendment in this country just to make sure that the government in this country never again becomes the kind of dictatorship that is happening right now under our very noses. Thank you very much. Goodbye.